This is the audio description of Quiet, Please. A crowd of people in a goalball gym gets seated. The edge of a blind walking stick next to a girl's foot enters the frame. The title, Lakeshore, pops up. A group of visually impaired children walks up the bleachers, and more close-ups of people on bleachers is seen. The title, Nick Pad, pops up. A whistle blows, and the title of the movie, Quiet Please, pops up. Quiet Please! A man in his 60s holding a blue ball with bells in it blows the whistle and speaks to the audience. Next crossover tournament starts. We have Lakeshore on my left, Florida on my right. Florida will start with the ball. I'd like to remind all the spectators to please remain quiet while the game's in progress. If you have a cell phone, please turn it off now. Thank you. He throws the ball to his left. A male Lakeshore goalball player named Nick is in a defensive stance on his hands and knees in front of the goal. Another Lakeshore goalball player named Josh guards the center of the goal. A whistle blows and the referee says play. A boy on the Florida team throws the ball and Josh blocks the ball. Nick taps the ground and Josh picks up the ball. Josh spins around with the blue goal ball in his right hands and releases it at full speed. The ball bounces across the court and bounces over the Florida team. The Lakeshore team scores a goal and the crowd cheers. Quiet, please. Center. Cliff Cook, the coach for the goalball team, a middle-aged man with brown hair and a smile on his face, begins to speak. Goalball doesn't compare to other sports. It's a game of power. You've got to decide that I want to get hit by this ball to block it. Josh gets hit by the ball. Josh Wellborn, a 17-year-old boy with albinism and bright blue eyes, sits outside on a swing and begins to describe goalball. As he describes it, three Lakeshore players are seen in front of the goal. Nick is seen from the chest up, tearing the goal ball open. The bells roll down and begin to jingle. Goal ball is a sport for blind and visually impaired, and there are three players on each side of a court, and they're all blindfolded. There's a ball that's about as big as a basketball, weighs about three pounds, and has bells in it. Josh rolls the ball down the court. You roll the ball down the court, sort of bowling style. A Texas goal ball team rolls the ball down the court towards the Lakeshore team, and the team blocks it. And you try to score goals, but as a defender, you have to lay on your side and let the ball hit you to block it. Parker Stewart, a 16-year-old boy with glasses and medium-length brown hair, begins to speak. He puts on black eye shades and walks out of the frame. A close-up of the blue ball rolling in his hands is seen. The goal ball rolls towards the screen, and the screen goes black. When I first started out, putting those eye shades on, it is actually pitch dark. Like You cannot see out of that thing. So it's a little scary at first, especially when like a huge ball is coming at you. As Josh begins to speak about momentum, Nick expands his stance. His arm swings past 180 degrees and he throws the ball quickly down the court. The ball bounces high across the court as Josh speaks. Momentum is very important. You need to expand the muscle as much as you can and then contract to get the ball moving as fast as possible. Nick, Josh, Parker, and Tanner begin to talk about the most painful places to get hit. The most painful place to get hit is probably the chest. Genitals. The face. Broken noses happen. I think I've done a bloody nose once. Nick Rollins, a 17-year-old boy with black hair and black eyes, speaks in a blue room on a green sofa. In the next scene, he swipes his hand over the ground, feeling for the ruffle of string under white tape on the court. Nick, Josh, and Parker are on the court, and Josh throws the ball. There's a close-up of Josh tapping the ground. When I step on this court, it's kind of like a new world where I only have to rely on my ears instead of my eyes. I orient myself by using my teammates and feeling around me. We can communicate by either tapping the ground or calling each other's names. Tanner Wood, a 13-year-old boy with brown hair, wearing glasses, is on a brown sofa at home. He begins to speak. When you walk in, 
and it's just so quiet. But all you can hear is just like a bell rolling. There's a close up of the goal ball swirling and jingling. There's a slow motion shot of Tanner throwing the ball towards the net and towards the viewer. He scores a goal. And two people talk and say, play. And then you score. And then all you hear is Wah! all the crowd screaming. That's what really gets me. Tanner is seen on the floor behind Nicole, falling asleep. It's peaceful, though, when it's quiet. Because, like, a lot of people take naps. I've done them before. Josh speaks about his past as old pictures of him flash across the screen. In one, he is seven. In another, he is in a wheelchair, playing with Parker at a camp. More pictures of Josh playing goal ball when Jen Armbruster was his coach are seen when he was nine or ten. Some scenes of him flash across where he's acting goofy. I feel like nothing would be the same if Lakeshore didn't exist. I found goal ball when I was either six or seven. There's a sports camp at Lakeshore called Sports Education Camp. That camp is all about adapting sports and showing you sports that are for people with visual impairments or who are blind. And then when I got to about nine, I started playing competitively. I've been on the Lakeshore team since its creation eight years ago. I remember getting beaten every game and I was the bench warmer. Josh rolls his hands over 20 or so goal ball medals as he talks about the improvement of the team. We definitely have progressed greatly. It's just taken us a while. A big gem is seen after seeing a small sign that says, quiet, please. Cliff ties a string to the goal ball goal, setting it up. It is 9 meters in length and 1.3 meters in height. He pushes a cart of goal balls across the court. The team does warm-up drills in front of the goal, running back and forth. This team, I think, was special. They were self-motivated. Josh and Parker clap hands happily. Tanner throws the ball towards Josh, who blocks it with his legs. The team rounds up in front of the goal. Tanner throws the ball, and Nick and Parker try to block it. Then Nick and Parker hug while wearing their eye shades. At the beginning of the season, I asked them the goals that they had for the season, and each one of them wanted uh, a national championship. A scene of St. Augustine, Florida flashes across the screen. There's Spanish moss trees, a sign for the Florida School of the Deaf and Blind, and there's even a crosswalk sign stating Deaf and Blind Children Crossing. Nationals takes place in St. Augustine, Florida at the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. It's a good experience overall. Pictures of the 2013 and then the 2014 Lakeshore Gold Ball teams pop up. and each, they're wearing gold medals because they were national champions in 2013 and 2014. Lakeshore has had a reputation of being a good, strong team. As Cliff speaks about the team pressure, slow motion pictures of Parker and Josh throwing the ball are seen. Then Nick throws the ball and scores against Tanner and Parker. They start to experience this pressure of keeping the streak going, but it's more important for them to see how hard that they can work. Nick slides down a swirly slide, and then Josh slides down a swirly slide. I hope there's going to be a Lakeshore team next year. Me and Nick, we were seniors this year, so next year we won't be eligible to play. But being close outside of goal ball means that you're going to be even closer inside of goal ball. Parker swings on a swing, and the whole team plays on the playground. We have good communication, and that's essential to being able to play well together. Tanner, Parker, and Josh block a ball from going into the goal. Tanner then taps the ground next to the tape, and then a ball gets scored against the Lakeshore team. We have to make sure we can trust each other all the time to be where we are in the position we need to be. If one person doesn't work well, it's easy to get scored on or to lose the game. Tanner begins to talk, describing the team. The whole team plays on the playground. It's just so cool, honestly. Because we just come, like, we just all combined into one family. Cliff smiles into the camera. Cliff, a good man. Josh swings around on the swirly circle bar. Josh, a funny person. Parker slides down a swirly slide. Parker, takes you under your wing. Nick plays with a steering wheel on the playground and smiles. 
He picks up Tanner like a baby and then lets him go on the ground. Nick, a gentle giant. He's like a teddy bear sometimes. Then he can just turn on you. And then myself, just trying to be funny. Tanner sings and dances towards the camera and taps his hand on the lens and the screen goes black. Please get that camera out of my face. Josh films himself with a GoPro outside while the sun isn't out. He goes inside and gives his dad a hug goodbye. This is the morning before we head out to Nationals. As you can tell, it's still dark outside. All right, buddy. All right. You're good. Yeah. You're good sport. And then walks over to his dog and tells her. Mwah. All right, now we're going to bring back a gold medal for you. Mwah. Title cards pop up as scenes from the airport and airplane show the team traveling from Birmingham, Alabama to St. Augustine, Florida. Some of the scenes include Nick looking outside of the airplane window and the boys dancing in the back of a minivan. The title cards read F Swallowed, Nationals, Three Days at Gold Ball, St. Augustine, Florida. The top eight state teams compete. Lakeshore has to win six games to become national champions three years in a row. Boys arrive at Nationals. Tanner touches a USA map and a shirt with emoji goalball player 2015 2016 pops up on the screen. Josh walks towards his friends and hugs them. He shakes hands with them as well and takes selfies with them. Tanner is seen playing with one of his friends as well. The Utah girls give hugs to their friends too. When you're at a tournament, it's sort of like time stops. I have more friends in goalball than I do outside of goalball. You know, that's another great part about being in a tournament is just seeing everybody again. Girls from the Utah goalball team and the Washington girls goalball team talk about why they love goalball. Boys from the Texas goalball team talk about why they love goalball as well. I just like playing it. It's super fun. It's kind of the only sport that I can really play. The ability to just have a team and then like bond with them. You get a lot of adrenaline from, you know, getting ready to play. If I get really stressed on instead of just going and screaming in a towel, I could just get my anger out on the court. Go Bulls love Go Bulls life. The girls from the Washington team hug in front of the goal. The Florida goalball team holds hands in a circle and get ready to play. The Texas girls team gets ready to play as well. Josh begins to speak in front of the camera while in the goalball gym. Nick looks at his phone in order to get a clear view of the game going on. The Georgia boys team scores a goal. We're here a little early to kind of, you know, check everybody out and see what everybody's doing. You got to know what you're up against. I'm not really worried too much about team's offense. I think I, I look at their defense and try to see where, where the holes are, where we can score goals. In excitement to get ready for their first game, Tanner taps a sign that says, Play with passion. The Lakeshore team gathers in a circle in a separate room as Cliff prepares them for the first game. He starts to speak. Play with passion. What we're going to do for the lineup, we're going to have Parker go center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Josh, I want you left, and Nick, you're going to be right. Tanner will look to get you in. There's no need to hit a specific target over and over, but just keep keep them guessing. You guys are good. You're ready. Let's do it. As the boys prepare for the first game, Josh and Nick put eye patches on their eyes. The boys each put on their eye shades, and the referee checks to see that there are no holes that they can look through. The referee throws the goal ball towards the South Carolina team. Number three throws the goal ball towards Lakeshore, and Josh picks up the ball. He throws the ball towards the South Carolina team again, and number seven catches it. Nick listens as number eight throws the ball towards the Lakeshore team again. 
Parker catches the ball and throws the ball. He scores a point as the ball hops over the South Carolina team. Carolina will be throwing first. Quiet, please. Stand. Play. There's a break, and Tanner puts on his eye shades. He's walked carefully towards the goal as he swaps places with Nick. Josh throws the ball towards the South Carolina. It is blocked and thrown back at Lakeshore. Parker picks up the ball and scores the final goal. The final score is 11 to 1, Lakeshore. Yeah. We're actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> The team shake hands and the Lakeshore team walks out the door towards the staircase. Josh, Nick, Parker, and Tanner sit on the staircase and look towards the camera. Josh and Tanner express their opinion about the game and about the competition. Well, this is it for the night, but I'm sure we have plenty more this weekend. Tomorrow and Saturday. Yes. A bunch of games. The title card pops up in the moonlight. It states, Day 2, Saturday, November 6, 2015. The Lakeshore team walks into the gym. Cliff watches them. As the fast sequence of the next five games is shown, there are scenes where different teams score against Lakeshore, as well as shots of Lakeshore scoring against the teams. One particular scene shows the Lakeshore team bumping into each other. The final scene shows Tanner scoring against the Arizona team. The second game is Lakeshore versus Washington, 12-2. The third game is Lakeshore versus Texas, 9-3. The fourth game is Lakeshore versus Florida, 14 to 4. The fifth game is Lakeshore versus Arizona, 11 to 1. We're not looking at the end result, but we're looking at how we got there. And we critique ourselves on our performance, but not the other team and how they play us. Green fades to black and then Nick jumps into a pool outside. Tanner quickly follows, splashing into the water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they both float around as Josh starts to talk in the hot tub. I still can't go a tournament without getting hit in the face. If I don't, if I don't leave a tournament with having some sort of scar on like my, like sort of some sort of like burn on my jawline or like on my cheek, I didn't play hard enough. Cliff holds up his phone and tells them, "All right, boys, we uh, we just got the number one seat." Right. 
Josh and Parker begin to speak. We did it. Actually, we haven't done it. But <laughs> we're we working one, on it. We had number one seed. We did it. Only we're not I mean, going to bronze. We're going all the way to gold. <laughs> Taking back all the White House. We're going to take back the bronze. <laughs> As the boys walk into the hotel rooms and fall asleep, Cliff tells them. Josh concentrates on the blue goal ball in his lap while the title card pops up stating, A3, Saturday, November 7th, 2015. The boys sit in a circle as Cliff tells them about the final game coming up against Texas. This is going to be a mental game. It's not going to be high scoring. Both teams are defensive powerhouses. You've got to mentally outlast your opponent while we're playing them, okay? Talk to each other, keep each other in it, keep each other focused. We're ready for this, guys. Both teams are shown in front of the goals, getting ready for the game. A referee in his 60s is shown holding the goal ball. He throws the ball towards the Texas team and the game begins. Texas throws the ball and it goes out. Parker listens as Nick throws the ball towards Texas, scoring the first goal. This next boys game is to determine the gold medal, first place for the Youth National Gold Bowl, USABA Gold Bowl Tournament. On my left I have Lakeshore, on my right I have Texas. Nick throws the ball and scores the second goal as well. <laughs> Things are not perfect though, and Texas scores a goal while the ball hops over Josh. The score is 2-1 to one now. The next goal is scored by Texas as the ball hops over Parker. The score is 2-2. Two to two. The Lakeshore team is not as relaxed now. The audience watches as Nick is the only one in front of the Lakeshore goal. He had a penalty. The Texas team throws the ball and scores against Nick. The score is now 3 to 2 Texas. <laughs> Tension is building and the Lakeshore team calls a timeout after the Texas team cheers loudly. Cliff gathers the team in front of the goal and states, <laughs> Parker and Nick, I need defense. Josh, take over the game. It's time. Josh begins to speak about his past experiences. When you're losing, people's spirits are going to drop a little bit, and my job is to lift them back up. That mental strength in the game is something that I feel has gotten me to actually win games. You have to be able to lose to be able to win. Josh takes over the game, taking risky, fast shots, and scores three goals in a row with only two and a half minutes left. The game ends with Lakeshore winning 5-3. to three. The two teams then shake hands at the end of the game, congratulating each other. Oh. Focus! Focus! Defense, Nick! Defense! Be strong on defense! Parker hugs his mom when the Lakeshore team huddles close together in a small circle. Cliff congratulates them. 
Great season, guys. I'm proud of the way you all played. Coming back from a deficit like that, turning it around, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. That's a huge accomplishment Especially right there. With two and a half minutes left. That, no, no, no. Okay. that was a awesome. good team that we just faced right there. Uh, Josh, Nick, it's been a pleasure. We're going to miss you all. Really, really, really proud of the way you all played, um, the way you developed into young men. Shots of the trophies pop up and Cliff begins to talk about the future of the team. The gold medals are placed around the necks of the team and they smile at each other, celebrating. In Go Ball, you need at least three players to have a team. Josh and Nick, they graduated, so they've aged out of the program. Tanner begins to talk outside while laying on the ground, wearing headphones. He's asked about the team's future. He talks about Josh and scenes of the team holding the trophy, Tanner and Nick holding their gold medals, and Josh kissing his mother and celebrating with the team or scene. We're trying to find a third player for next year. It would be good if we could keep Josh, but... Can you see yourself being like a, um, like a Josh of the team? in a couple of years? No, because he's just so talented and so good at this sport. I don't think, I don't think anybody could compare to him because he's, he carries himself with class and dignity. Josh begins to speak. Parker is the only one on the, on the team now with real experience. I feel like if they do get a third, it's going to be another grind for them. There's, there's going to have to be some losses to uh, actually get back to the top. Cliff begins to speak and images of boys in everyday clothes pops up. I am happy to see them go on to greater things, pursuing college, going to a Paralympic team. As Cliff speaks about working at Lakeshore, video of him coaching the boys is seen. Working at Lakeshore and coaching these kids, the thing that I've learned is that these are normal kids. Josh works on a computer using Photoshop. Parker plays a video game. They may have a disability, but they're normal. Society tells us that people with disabilities can't do much, but it's just, it's not true. Kids in wheelchairs play wheelchair tennis on a court at the Lakeshore Foundation as Cliff talks about disability and accessibility. You can have a disability, but not be disabled if society provides the right resources. A sign for the Lakeshore Foundation pops up and an image of the Lakeshore building is seen. Josh speaks and a close-up of his bright blue eyes is seen. I have ocular cutaneous albinism. What I would see at 20 feet, somebody with perfect vision would see at 300 feet. Parker speaks and a close-up of his eyes and glasses is seen. As he walks backwards, his image fades into complete blurriness. I have a detached retina in my right eye, so I can't see out of that period. If that were to happen to my left eye, then I'd be completely blind. Nick speaks, and his dark eyes are seen moving back and forth. When I see 20, 100, the farther things are away, the more blurry they get. As Tanner speaks, his bright brown eyes are covered in black dots. Tanner skates down a colorful skating rink with his friends. And then Tanner speaks on his sofa at home. I have Stargardt. So, if my eyes are very fatigued, that makes me see black dots every now and then. I don't let that stop me from doing anything. No one's perfect. Everyone has something going on with them. But that what makes us normal. He jumps in front of the camera and waves his hands with a smile on his face. Nick speaks about his future and images of him working on his Jeep are seen. His arms and hands are covered in grease as he looks at the insides of his car with a small flashlight. Next year, I plan to go to college and get ready to start the rest of my life. My goal is to get accepted by the Mercedes-Benz program at Shelton State to go work for them. Because Mercedes has a good working environment and a good high-paying job. Tanner speaks and his face goes from blurry to crisp as he talks about being a doctor to cure eye disease. He walks into the frame with a goal ball as he talks about maybe being a goal ball coach in the future. I would just like to be like a doctor that can find a cure for eye disease or be a graphic designer. Maybe even like 
if Cliff like resigns as a coach later on, like become a go ball coach. Parker speaks as we see him laugh on the couch. When he talks about going into the arts, he plays piano as well. And when he concludes his thoughts, we see him laughing outside. I do want to be an astrophysicist, but there are times when I'm just like, uh, maybe I'll do something with art. That's the beginning of one of my favorite pieces, but I don't know the rest of it. I'm hoping as I learn and I experience more things that I'll figure out exactly what I want to do. Josh speaks in a workout facility is seen. He does pull-ups, jumps over weights, and lifts a big green weight. As he speaks about his wish to be a Paralympian, he puts eye shades on and throws a goal ball towards the goal, blocking out the screen. I want to specialize in sports psychology and, and um, also want to study sports science and kinesiology and just how the body moves. But right now, I have plans to play until my body won't let me. I have Paralympic aspirations. I want to be a Paralympic gold medalist in gold ball. And I am aiming to make it on the men's team for the 2020 Paralympics in Tokyo. Credits pop up over a blue goal ball. They state, Quiet, please. Director, Ingrid Fowl. Videographers, Ingrid Fowl, Orlando Thompson. Editors, Ingrid Fowl, Matt Hinton, Hannah Perkin. Featuring, Josh Wellborn, Nicholas Rollins, Parker Stewart, Tanner Wood, Cliff Cook. Featuring the top USABA high school 2015 goalball teams, Lakeshore, Texas Wildcats, Georgia Academy Panthers, South Carolina Hornets, Florida Cobras, Utah Havoc and Rage, Washington Lions and Lionesses, Arizona Sentinels, New York Stars. Music. Organic Dance Floor by Jack Elphick. Acoustic Patters Number 4 by Jack Elphick. What If I Said I'm Sorry by Loving Caliber, Mystery Mammal by Nothing Else Matters, The Wonders of the Summer by D. Smiles, Inspiration I Won't Give Up on My Dreams by D. Smiles, Never Wrong by Ketza, Tiptoe Instrumental by Ye Ye, Beautiful and Peace Too by Yepperhag, Fast Skyline by Scott Holmes. Special thanks, Linda Wellborn, Alex Richmond, Delaney Eaton, Julia Curti, Megan Rusin, Melanie Boyd, Melody Salisbury, Jeremy Martinez, Emmett Johnson, Demetria Aubier, Mark Gronquist, Devion Perez, Jordan Main, Dominique Bray, Ricky Castanoa, Shania James, Orion Pitim, Terion Batim, Ella Donaghy, Chloe Laramore, Michael Split, Stephen Lazarus, Jean Amato, Richard Landley, Brian DeVos, Olivia DeVos, Ken Armbruster, Jen Armbruster, Asia Miller, Don Gulick, Ali Olson, Amanda Dennis, Alexia Strudel, Mary Bai Huking, Chase Tennant, and everybody else that helped with this project. At the end of the movie, the title card for Nick Pad pops up. It's the National Center on Health, Physical Activity, and Disability. More information can be found at www.nickpad.org.